Hey, welcome to the live stream. It's me, Jamie Hartley, and we've got... Me, Lawrence James. Hello, welcome, Crossfader family. Welcome, everyone. Now, we are using a new live streaming platform, testing a few things. So, first of all, the important thing, can you hear us okay? Mic check one, two. Lawrence? Let, us, let me know in the chat if you can hear us okay and you can see us okay and things like that. There is a slight delay. Yeah, of course. We'll try and work around that, but... Um, while we're just letting those comments come in, today our topic is all about how to be a DJ in lockdown. So, you know, we're all in this situation. The world has pretty much come to a standstill. Most clubs, yep. bars, events have all stopped around the world. Festivals have stopped. I'm definitely worried about that festival scene and we're going to miss it here in the UK, I think, oh, this yes. year. Oh, yes. um, but with everything locking down, how are we keeping motivated? What are we doing to protect ourselves when things open back up? And that's what we're going to be talking about today. So yep. I can see some comments coming in now saying that the audio is all good. So I think we're probably at about that time all good. to start pulling some comments in soon when they start coming through. Um, Lawrence, how has your week been? You know, how many weeks are we in now? Four weeks in lockdown? We have four weeks and I was locked down for an extra couple of weeks. So I've been pretty much stuck in a house for about six weeks now, but no complaints, really. No, fair enough. Well, yeah, I'm the same. I'm, uh, I'm just glad to have a garden with the kid. And yeah. yeah. So, garden as well. Sun's been out. The sun's been out here as well. So Yeah, we're making the most of it. Yeah. Um, right. So let's have a look. Let's see if I can just add... A comment. Um, we'll just add one just to test it to the broadcast from earlier on. Here from yeah. Camille Sainan. The question is, I have a DDJ400, but I want an upgrade. I actually want to go for the Pioneer XDJ XZ. Is it yeah. the best choice? Or should I go for something like the Pioneer XDJ RX2? Um, Interesting. So, yeah, I mean, I'm. it's a big upgrade. It's a big, big upgrade. Yeah. Uh, to go to an XZ. It's very expensive. A lot of money. If you are planning on using a USB drive with your setup and you want to get used to and familiar with using a USB drive to eventually play on CDJs, for example, then the RX2 or the XZ are going to accommodate that. The only difference between the XZ and the RX2 really are those mechanical jog wheels and four yeah. channels. Um, bear in mind, the four channels only work when you're plugged into a laptop. So yeah. the USB still won't access four channels. So that's probably the biggest decider. Are you going to use four channels? If you are going to use four channels and you're going to be happy plugging into the record box on your laptop, go for like a DDJ 1000. 100%. I prefer yeah. the 1000, definitely. Yeah. Have you, you've played on both, haven't you, Lawrence? Yeah. Yeah, I definitely prefer the 1000. Like you say, um, the XZ is, I mean, it looks great. Um, but yeah, it has its problems, but it doesn't make sense to not go for a a 1000 whether it's a 1000 or 1000 srt depending on what you're on yeah um because you've got your four channels there all ready to go if you're just using a laptop perfect but again if you're using a usb or anything like that the xz is is um is a really good um piece of kit but it's yeah. just it's just really expensive but if you want to make that commitment then go for it yeah right just a big shout out to Lee Hollins head here. Just thank Hello, you. Lee. Just bought the beginner DJ course um, on our website. It was overwhelmed before. Now it makes sense. Thanks a lot, Lee. Uh, great to have you locked in here live yep. on the chat as well. Right. Amazing. We've got another one from Manuel Campos. How should an up and coming DJ tackle the DJ scene once all this gets lifted? Will great it question. be harder? Right. Let's dive deep into this. Lost yeah. Course. Great question. You're a working DJ as well as working for Crossfader. You work right. regularly in clubs and That's obviously right. all those gigs have come to a standstill. So what is your plan? <laughs> well, I mean, I, the, you know, the question was, um, how, you know, how does a DJ get to work? But I mean, the work is happening right now for me. So yep. I am still creating loads and loads of content. I'm doing loads of live streams. And even the even the nights that I am I usually go and DJ at or DJ for, I'm like I'm streaming from like their pages as well. So I'm still ticking over and still making loads of content. This is the time now to be making all that content. Yeah. And people are really um you know open to um the, everyone's engaging at the minute. So it's a great time to take advantage of the relationships with promoters, with nightclub managers that maybe you've not spoken to before, that you just want to drop a little message saying, you know, how are you? How are you keeping in lockdown? Yeah. You know, can I send not, you over a can I send you a mix? Can I send you a video or something? And 
And this is the time now to kind yeah. of lock in some key relationships and get your content ready to, to put out or keep, keep it coming One out. One of the hardest things with promoters and managers that run events is they're always so busy that they don't have time to listen to people's mixes. It's not the way that you used to get gigs, but now clubs are shut. They have got a lot more time. So if you do drop into an inbox, it's probably, it's more likely, I'm not saying they are going to just drop everything and listen to your mix, but yep. it's probably more likely than it was for them to be aware of you. And I think, do you run the risk of if you're not live streaming and putting regular content out, you know, you you'll get lost in all of the promotion that everyone else is doing and the managers yeah. and promoters won't be noticing you they'll be looking at all these new DJs that have taken this time to create an opportunity for themselves and i think that's something you need to be careful of not just getting complacent of the gigs you used to have make yes. sure you're constantly putting that content out there and i think yes. yeah i think that um that answers that question hopefully i great think it's question. a big one it's, it is a great question though and it's something that everyone does need to be aware of yep. um right daniel ross and now new dj just starting out where do you get your music content from is there free sites you could recommend um free sites is is tricky i don't think there really are any free sites we just talking about free music we do have a crossfader music pack so if you head to this link here we are crossfader.co.uk forward slash get started you can sign up and download a free crossfader music pack which has loads yep. of exclusive tunes in there but beyond uh -huh. free um free downloads on soundcloud you're probably going to come across a few producers yeah, maybe if you know if you know any friends that are producers um that are making you know mashup packs or remixes and things like that you know, reach out to your producer friends, but yeah, um, yeah it's going to be very limited because obviously people making music want to get paid essentially. So, um, and if you can as well, you know, you want to support the scene as well. You want to, you want to put a little bit in. D DJ pools are the best place yeah. to get to get music from because yeah. you can pay a subscription service and you, a lot of them you can download unlimited songs. So it works out as so little that you're paying for for the you know for the actual song itself if you're constantly downloading. Yeah. Um, so I, I, you know, the, I use DJ City or uh, Beatport or BPM Supreme. Yeah. Um, something like that is is where you want to be because, yeah, it's great if you get free music, but again, you got to think of the bigger picture. You want to be you want to be paying into the process of yeah, of, of, of course, music, of course. Where, you know. So. But you get yeah. a lot more for your money with record pools, so that's a great yeah. shout. Yeah. We've got another one here. Craig Shipley says, Hi, lads. Would it be better to use mashups to try and get around the copyright issue on live stream sets? Good question. Yeah. You've done a lot I of live would. streams, live I mean, stream mixes on your own yeah. personal pages. How have you found it? Yeah, I mean, I've I've not been kicked off as as, as much as what a lot of people have done. Yeah, what, yeah. What, what has happened with mine after I've finished um, the stream, then then sometimes it won't let yeah. me post it. Yeah, but yeah. I've not been kicked off too much, but I, I do mix very quickly and I do do a lot of mashups and get on the microphone a lot and use a lot of effects and things like that. We put a, yeah. um, a video out of, you know, how to, Holland did a video on, you know, how to get around that kind of copyright thing. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. yeah ways, mashups to, is great. ways to get around it, yeah. Yeah, mashups is a great one. Um, and just quick mixing, using effects, remixes, um, and getting on the mic and speaking to your audience and engaging as well um so yeah go for it yeah definitely mashups definitely should work yeah um okay this is quite a good one from jame foresight what's the name of the program you're using now and does it allow yep. me to use my logos as well as like how you have your png files displayed here yep. um yeah i'm using ecam live and cam is spent with spelt with a double m now this is this uh, this is the first time i've used this software i've just got it today we're testing it out with this live stream probably going to be way more coming on it but it's a cool software you can put logos on you can put pngs over the top as you can see we've got some branding going on um but I, i'm still very new to it so it's a paid software unlike yeah. obs which i can highly recommend as well which is a free software and we've yeah. got some tutorials on how to use that as well on the channel mm, this is uh, cool though looks good yeah i'm glad it looks good i'm glad everyone's feeling it um question for lawrence right this is a cool one. Yep. Jack P Parry says, big up the team at Crossfader. Question for Lawrence. Yep. Love your one minute mashups. How do you go about setting up your track so you can play all your songs via the hot cues? Yeah, it's definitely the main, the main question I get asked from DJs. <laughs> so it, it's, it's quite painstaking and it's, it's I can't really, just, I'm, I'll do my best to describe it, but it's hard to describe it without seeing it. But essentially there's, 
let's say 10, for example, there's there's 10 songs on one track. So yeah. I just set cue points. But So I'll record like 10 songs into one track and then set the cue points on them. Well, eight, eight usually because there's eight cue points. But then, so so the two tracks will have eight different cue points on them. So it's so it's kind of pre-recorded, so you can just trigger the cue points. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's a it's a hard one to explain, but I hope that's that's the simplest way I can put it. It's all they're all in one track. So, so do you record it just, it just in your DJ software, or do you drag it into like Logic or Ableton? I used to use Logic, but I just re I just record them through Serato now back into it. So the piece, the little piece I want, the little. Uh, instrumental part yeah i'll just hit i'll just make sure the tempos are right on the the, the same tempos on both yeah, songs yeah. yeah i'll record that i'll record that little little one minute um instrument uh, 10 second instrumental and then i'll go to the next song and i'll i'll stick i'll take the vocal and 10 seconds of the vocal record that in leave leave the thing recording while it's picking up the whole um track so it all becomes one track yeah yeah, I mean, this is, I don't, I don't yeah, know if how simple it, yeah. that sounded, no. but... <laughs> uh, it makes sense to me. Hopefully that answered the question. It's right, quite I've a painstaking process. A good one from here, St. Steve. Hi, guys, loving your content. Any tips for building confidence when starting out? I have the equipment to live stream, but can't quite summon the confidence to go live for fear of making mistakes. <laughs> okay, well... Listen, you, you, you will make mistakes. It's just how it is. I yep. mean, that's the fun bit of it, though, right? I mean, whatever... Whatever, when you get that little feeling in your stomach, that that's nerves. That means like you care about something. So yeah, I I still I still before I press um, you know live now, you, I, I do a hundred checks to make sure everything's yeah everything's right. The stream looks good. I can hear the sound. Um, I've got I've got like a well lit room and, and et cetera et cetera. Yeah. Um, but when you when you after your first five minutes, you, you'll yeah, be yeah you get into it. Fine. I yeah, think when when people start engaging with you, it's amazing. Yeah, I think it's good to have nerves and yeah you've got to just you've just got to go for it and i know everyone will just say that just go for it for example we like you said we all still make mistakes i went live in my kitchen with the denim prime goat it was the second time i'd been on it here in the uk um, and i was just testing it out but i was live in my kitchen on youtube this weekend just gone the video is on there but uh, i don't know about an hour and a half into my set i thought i'm going to try and do something a bit more performance based on this little unit and i'm i'm, I'm used to doing hot cue play like pre messing around with the hot cues but the hot cues are set above the tiny little jog wheels and the jog wheels are in vinyl <laughs> mode so i'm playing yeah. around and then suddenly i tap the jog wheel accidentally with my palm of my hand and it like pull, like puts the yeah. track out of time and it's like yeah. whoa the big clang right live in the middle of the mix but without panicking yeah. i just thought right just groove back into it get my hot cue play going again and just roll with the mistakes and it's live yeah. and i think it's one of those things it's it's good to have a human feel about it yeah. um if you never do it, you're not going to go learn yeah. from it. You're not going to progress with it. So nope. you've got yeah. to bite the bullet. Um, yeah, I think that's that's all we can do, really. Um, yeah. Right, I'm just going to read through. We've got so many comments coming in now. I am going to try and find a good one. How do you mix? Um, right, quick one for M Mail. Um, the DDJ400 is the best for starting out. Thumbs up. I think we've got a lot of DDJ400 owners and users yes. in the comments and as part of Crossfader. It's definitely one of my favorite products. However, I think it's pretty much sold out worldwide. We've getting so many emails. Like, is. What should I buy instead? Um, so if you don't want to spend any more money, go for the DDJ200. Anyone that's listening yep. that wants to get started in this lockdown, um, my, they my are your fav My budget. favorite is the SB3. Yeah, um, A bit more money, but... I'll my favorite is still the SB3. I filmed some content on that today, actually. But um, yeah, there is still things out there. DDJ, the 400 is, is so popular because it's just well priced. It doesn't mean it's any better than uh, it's, you know things around it. It's just yeah. it's kind of well priced in the market. All right, this is a good one as well because I I used to struggle with this. Um, DJ Star Somatic on YouTube said I have been struggling with how to process reducing songs in Record Box. Given I initially downloaded more than what I needed, don't want to start over from scratch. So, right. what what he's getting at is, is he doesn't want as many songs in his library, and he wants to downsize his library. But okay. how do you do it without just starting from scratch and I, I know this feeling because when I was working, I used to download so much music and then it takes you longer to find what you want. So oh, I'm not, I'm not the one to be asking here. My, <laughs> my library is all over the place. Unfortunately, like I just, I just kind of go off memory nowadays. Uh, <laughs> I need to, yeah. I need, if anyone else can help with this question, I need the help as well. So <laughs> yeah, well, all I could say if any bit of advice is yeah. 
what I did is I didn't delete the songs. I made a crate or a folder that was called yeah. to delete. And anything when I was just in my gigs, when I was mixing, and I saw it in my library. I was like, I, it, I've never played that. I haven't played that. And I don't know how long. And I'm, I've got no plans to play. I dragged it into delete. And then I'd keep evaluating that crate or that playlist and going, okay, can I delete all these songs? Have I played them in the last three months? No. So, you know, you can see DJ play counts on record box as well and on Serato, yeah. how many times the song's been played yeah. um, in your library. So you can go off that as well. And that was where that temporary ah. playlist, I could go, I definitely don't need them. Let's bite the bullet yeah. and delete them. And and just on a more organizational tip, yes, spend a couple of days off, like a full day to yourself um, and organizing your crates is quite a, it's a really therapeutic thing to do to just go in there and organize them quite specifically, you know, so from like, house deep house you know electro future house r&b hip-hop and go yeah. and just make yourself a load of crates and 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 organize them well and it's quite a therapeutic thing to do quite a nice thing to do now and it's a great thing to do if you are in lockdown which is obviously the yeah. topic we're trying to uh talk about and and sort of yeah. highlight is that what can we do and that's one of the biggest things is organizing your music so yeah. but um, have your laptop have netflix on and just go through yeah yeah so DJ Benny here is just backing up what we were saying, mistakes in a live mix show that is actually live and not pre-recorded yeah. nor rehearsed. And that's great, yes. great advice to whoever asked the uh, the question before about going and, live. And and I, I've, I have done before, um, going back a couple of years, I have done a pre-recorded mix and then broadcast it live. Yeah. And yeah, you get, you get a, you know, you get a perfectly technical mix, but you can't engage with the people as they're watching. And yeah. the best so thing about, the best thing about the live situation is, you can take requests and you can do shout outs and people are watching you and can engage with you. You, you know you're there. So. Yeah, just like we're uh, doing right now. So shout like out to everyone right that's now. commenting. Um, M Mail again, and just a quick comment, Mixcloud pros and cons. Now I know, Lawrence, you use Mixcloud on a personal tip, don't you? Yeah, um, I've used it for a while. I stopped, I stopped using it when they went to subscription, but uh, I listened to a great podcast um, telling us why they went to the su- subscription and it's basically because Mixcloud don't have any problems with copyright, and it's essentially they've had to start charging to, for you to get that service. So when you upload mixes, they're not going to be taken down because you're paying a fee, and that fee's going to publishing essentially. So yeah, um, it is. It isn't the greatest. It's hard if you're like beginning out on Mixcloud to get your mixes heard from just using the free, um, like their free package at the moment. Um, you need to build a bit of a fan base up, which is quite difficult. But um, in the long run, it, you know, it is worth it is worth it just to just to get you into the habit of uploading mixes on the regular and trying to create that fan base and giving out free mixes and things like that. I yeah. still do SoundCloud um, as well, uh, but again, there is always some issues there with copyright, where as Mixcloud is not that problem. Right, I've got two questions here which are very similar. So we've got Camille. Saying and saying, is it going to be harder to get gigs after this period? And I've also got Elliot Halloran. Big up Elliot Halloran. We're, hey, we Elliot. know Elliot. And he said, hope you are lads, cocktail, cocktail crew. Do you think when this, when we're eventually allowed back in clubs that the industry will change after all this madness? And I think that they kind of go hand in hand. Getting gigs, yeah. how is it going to change? You know, we, we touched on it a little bit ago, but anyone new that's joining the, the live stream right now, do you think it's going to change? Do you think the industry is going to change? Do you think clubs are going to open and we're going to have to social distance? Like, is that going to be a thing? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. No, mm. I think I do think it'll all be relative. I think it. I think it'll, this. I think it'll be over in kind of a blink of an eye. When, whenever that is, um, you can't. You know, it's the, the our, our regular routine and things like that won't change. And it might be a bit weird at first. You know, just just like shaking hands, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. which we haven't done in so yeah. long. That that'll be. That'll be a strange one, but I do think over time, you know, this isn't this isn't like the you know the first kind of pandemic that's ever been, and everything always kind of levels itself out eventually. So yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing my friends again and and um, go into these live gigs and go in and pressing play on my first song and stuff like that. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Well, I, I think it's going to change it, and I think it's going to change it for the good because I think people are going to be so ready to get back into yeah. clubs that it's going right. to bring a whole new... People aren't going to take it for granted and just go out and get... As, you know, People are going to go out and get drunk as they can, I suppose, here in the UK. We love doing that, but um, oh, yes. <laughs> I think 
people are going to approach the music industry with so much more respect to be like, I was deprived of it. So I need yeah. to, I need to make the most of it now. And I think hopefully that will, uh, yeah. you know, I think there's, there's, oh, there'll, there's be, there'll be a buzz for a few months for sure. For sure. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that. Definitely. So, um, let me just have a look through the comments right now to answer is blue. Am I allowed to play songs from the crossfader music pack in my live sets on Insta and Facebook? Yes, yep. go for it. Use That's them. Why it's there. Um, anyone that missed it before, the link, I've just popped it up. We are crossfader.co.uk forward slash get started. And you can sign up and download the Crossfader music pack. Um, yep. And yeah, you can use those tunes in your live mixes. The great tunes to get started with, the great tunes to practice with, the exclusive tunes from friends of ours that we've collated from around the world. Um, and thanks so much to the people that have given us those tunes to send to you. Oh. Yes. Um, so let's have a look what else we've got in the comments. Wow, a lot of people so coming many questions. in now. Thank you so, much. so many questions. Um, let me have a look. Here we go. Isaac Esch, what are your favorite transition techniques and which effects do you use the most? Oh, I'm, I'm really into the Transformer at the minute. I'm yeah. really into that. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah, just kind of stutters, stutters the beat, works really well on a. Um, uh, an acapella so trans i'm using transformer a lot of the minute and slip mode as well because the best thing about slip mode is you don't have to be really technically good that's the, it's like it's kind of a get out of jail free card so <laughs> yeah what if you have slip mode on your controller or your software hit the slip mode and just um yeah just figure out some cool things to do in slip mode because essentially even if you go wrong it, it restarts it, it carries on with the song yeah. in time anyway yeah. so yeah you know what you've done some cool stuff with slicer mode as well that i've seen in some yeah. videos and our performances that's one i think yeah. is an underrated feature and it's a shame mm. that they kind of took it away now in record box they've sort yeah. of got rid of it on the hardware it's still there yeah. in the record box software but yeah i think serato that slicer mode it can be a lot of fun um, yep. but effects fun. effects like you say trans is a big one echo is obviously the most common one that's always a go-to um yeah. And even just like noise effects, we're doing a tutorial yeah. on the noise effects that's going to go live either this week or next week. Um, so check that out when it goes live on the channel. That's a really cool effect that you can do a lot with. And it's kind of one of those underrated effects. Um, you kind of need to be clever about how you use it. So look out for that tutorial coming yep. soon as well. Here, yes. Peppy's Cube says how to select the next song. What to take into account, BPM, key or energy? I'll let you go first, um, Lars. <laughs> um, it depends where you are. I mean, let's just take it from like now. So on a li on live streams now, I, I still have that kind of club thing where I'm trying to keep a capacity. So let's say we hit a hundred people watching. Yeah. I'm trying to keep I'm trying to keep hundred people engaged. Yeah. So I'm not kind of I'm not kind of even though I've got a bit more freedom to kind of play what I want because I'm not in a club, I still feel like I still do it like see it as that kind of environment. So when I see a hundred people watching and say I'm playing a Drake song and then I go into like a dubstep song and then 70 people watching, I'm like, okay, may, you know, maybe that's what, not what they're here for. Maybe they want yeah. a bit more, you know, Drake and R and B or things like that. So, yeah. um, it's, it's still the same now as it is in clubs. It's all about kind of looking up and seeing what people are reacting to. Yeah. Um, whereas, you know, if it's just yourself jamming, you can you can play what you want, see what sounds good. That's I think it. for inspiration for me, I go about a plus or minus five BPM from the song I'm playing and yeah. look at what mixes in key. I don't, I'm not I'm not super strict. Like I will not play that song if it doesn't mix in key because there's ways mm. to go about it. But I yeah. think just to give you ideas, yeah, giving yourself a bit of a range in BPM, figuring out, looking in your library what mixes in key. Um, yeah. But also, I always use that. I'll, I'll try and challenge myself and go, okay, what if I was to play a totally different genre now, but it's stuck within those rules? You know, it still yeah. sticks within a similar BPM and it works in key, but it's a totally different genre. How's that going to work? And that's a cool way to get creative, I think, as well. Yeah. Um, right, this is a good one. Augusto Costa says, do you believe this is the moment for new DJs after quarantine? due to a lot of parties, etc. cetera. Um, I, I do. I, I think this is the perfect opportunity for new DJs to build an audience because there is no other time that people are going to be engaged as much as they are now online. So if you focus this time on building an audience and building a following online, the promoters and the managers are going to have to take notice when clubs start opening back up, I think. Oh, yes. Yeah, do you agree? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Um, I didn't even think about the parties thing. Yeah, people will be having parties. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. put yourself out there, speak to your friends, and organize yeah. your organize your own parties. Organize your, 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 your 
lifting the lockdown party. So yeah, yeah that's cool. Sure. Yeah, we need to do that for Crossfader. Maybe we could have yeah, a big Crossfader live. We'll live get loads of equipment party, hooked yeah, up. We'll great. do a live set. Yeah, that'd, that'd be yeah. cool. That'd be cool. Yeah. Um, right. Again, similar stuff. So DJ always with coronavirus and nightlife shut down. Do you see a rebound in the future? And is it still feasible to pursue DJing and music as a career, considering quitting my electrical job to pursue? Um, yep. I wouldn't jump at it right now because the world's in such an uncertain place, and I think people are going to need electricians before they need new DJs um, when yeah, but, stuff gets but, lifted. But, but, but if you wanted to go into DJ, it's just a perfect time to hone them skills in, and like I think we touched on it before, get just get that, get them skills up and get the get your networking done now um, with people from the industry, and just you know reach out to people you know and say, look. I'm, just started out DJing. When this is over, do you mind if I come and maybe do a do a couple of hours for free and you know see what you think or something like that? Get you to get your foot in the door. But, yeah. Uh, make sure that you're getting all your content ready and your skills are up. Uh, you you're technically uh, practicing every day and you're getting some uh, mixes and doing a couple streams, maybe recording a mix, th- things like that. Yeah, hundred percent. Use this time now to to, to get ready. Yeah. So Danda said, do you guys have any advice for young DJs during quarantine? How should we promote ourselves? So kind of touching on what we've just been talking about. Um, but if you're already a DJ, you know, content, 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 content is king. What are some yeah. of the things that you plan into your weeks, Lawrence, for content well, and promoting well, just yourself? This, just, to, just to go back to his question is, uh, uh, I mean, when I stream, I kind of do it late, late on a Friday and Saturday night where I know that, you know, people of kind of my similar age are, are online and, and kind of watching it for kind of the party vibe. But if you're a younger, um, if you're a younger DJ, uh, maybe have a little day stream where, you know, people under 16 can, you know, have a little party with the parents in the living room or in the gardens or something like that. You can still, you know, stream live to a, to a different kind of audience. So um, you can definitely do that as well. hundred percent. Um, this is a good one. I'm just going to kind of touch on the end of it. Ian Fitzgerald said, I've been using my time in isolation to work on my mixes, to upload to Mixcloud for the first time. Any tips on how to make a mix impressive for club owners? Should they be long or short mixes? Well, this, this comes from, again, this, I listened to a podcast about Mixcloud not so long ago, and this comes from the owner of Mixcloud. So the most important thing is the, the first one minute of your mix. So... The people that are quite well known on uh, Mixcloud, they'll always have some kind of really hype intro, introduce either introducing themselves, introducing a mix, talking, um, you know, ad- advertising something else up and coming, something really engaging in, in that first minute, yep. showing off some DJ skills or something. So because there's there's so much content and so many mixes to listen to, you've got to make sure that yours stands out. So that first minute, that first minute, minute and a half. You need to do something that, that you, you haven't heard before. Yeah. Uh, yep. Because if you just start, if you're starting a mix with a, you know, two minute build up to a song, you know, people are just going to go, well, I'm not, yeah. you know, we're not sticking not, around. Not yeah. that patient. No, p- perfect, perfect piece of advice. Um, DJ Ishan says, Jamie, is production important for the DJs? Because I only learn DJing. Um, I think in this climate and, and the way that DJs are now, you don't need to be able to produce to make it as a DJ. You can get quite big as a DJ, but there is definitely, you kind of get to a point and you hit a limit and it's very rare that you'll find a DJ like DJ EZ here in the UK who's gone past that point of you know, he's almost like an artist but he's only a DJ. Um, yeah. I think you do get to a limit. You might be playing in clubs all over your country. Um, yeah. And you might be earning a good living out of it, but to get to the next step, all the people that are playing the big festivals are artists that mix music as well. So I think it's just something to bear in mind. It depends how far you want to take it and what your end goals are, really. Um, you produce as well, Lawrence. What what do you yeah, think? Yeah, I mean, same thing. Same thing. I got to I got to a kind of a limit, and I was just playing um, clubs, and I, I knew that I needed to take it to that next level. So put a lot of time into production, and that really helped me get different kind of gigs and um it, yeah it, if you're i mean if you're if your goal is to be is to just have a you know steady career as a dj in the bars and clubs and things like that then yeah not necessarily but 
depends what your kind of ambition is. Yeah, if you want to take it to that superstar kind of level, it just it's just it just comes naturally with it, and it should go hand in hand essentially. I mean, a lot of the a lot of the world's biggest DJs aren't you know they made music and then learned how to DJ. That's just that's just how it is. But yeah. um, it, it, all, it all depends on what your goals are. Like I say, if you're if you're happy to be um, a resident DJ, you know, for a sustained amount of time, then you don't necessarily have to. And like, if if you're not passionate about it, then you're not going to stick with it because you're not going to force yourself to do something. So you have to yeah. you have to find a, a love for producing, like a love for DJing. Otherwise, you're not going to put the effort in that need that you need to. And I'd say it's ten times more difficult than yeah. DJ to, to produce music. So yeah. Yeah. Um, Keaton Shaw said, do you have any advice for DJs who are learning or just starting out what to learn, practice, what to practice, what to master? Um, obviously we build and, and we have online courses. We have online tutorials. We have lots of education out there from through Crossfader. Um, the way that I structure things from teaching people one-to-one years ago in a studio, what the way I find people learn the best is in a very practical way. So, don't spend loads of time organizing and preparing music. Get on your decks and start playing and start experimenting and start mixing is the first thing. Um, yes, it can be overwhelming where to, what to actually master first. Uh, I always go back to learning to beat match. I think it's an invaluable fundamental skill. Even with all the aids that we have nowadays with syncs and waveforms and beat counters, they're all great, but that relies on some sort of analysis to be correct, like a beat grid. Uh, it relies on some software analyzing the music. So I always go and say, right, beat matching, train your ears because we listen to music with our ears. We don't watch music with our eyes. We listen to it. So you put yourself in the crowd's position straight away. And when it comes to mixing things like using your EQs, which is the next sort of core skill of understanding how music sounds when it's blended together, there's not really visuals that will tell you what sounds good. You've got to use your ears. So getting really familiar with music and listening to it, listening to the structure of music, the way it's produced, the way it's, um, yeah, just how the EQs are separated in the music is, is all stuff that I think is the core stuff to focus on yeah and the benefit of do, doing it with inside a course is learning at your own pace and being able to have that almost like a backup there if you kind of forget something or something like that to to have that because you know without it sometimes you'll you'll be you'll be you'll you'll want to try something and you just you just can't figure out what it is but we're having that course there to, to, to have to any time is just ideal We've got a few people commenting quite a few times. Just going to clear up some things. How do I record a set on the DDJ 800 and my iPhone? Um, the DDJ 800 plugs into Rekordbox, so you can record internally in Rekordbox. There is a tab along the top of Rekordbox. That there's a little um, tab that says record, and you can drop that down and hit the record button. Um, if you want to record it directly to your iPhone. Uh, Evermix. Evermix, maybe, but you'd have to come out of the master out. Yeah. on the back and go into the Evermix and then you can plug the Evermix into your phone or something like um, the iRig, which yeah. the iRig Stream, which we are just testing at the moment. We've done a few tests on it, so I can't recommend it fully yet. But the Evermix we've tested and it's good. You've you've used it, haven't you, Lawrence? Yeah, I've got it somewhere around here. Yeah, yeah, I've used it. It's, it's so simple. It's literally plug and play. Nice. Um, um, right, so let's go for... Easiest way, this is from CAC Music, easiest way yep. to start incorporating live act elements in a DJ set, sort of house and techno. Um, it's a big thing in that industry is incorporating yep. the live element. It's not just about mixing music. It's about creating a show, creating um, a live piece of music, really. I would say if you have a standard setup where you can mix tune for tune and you want to add something else to that, the first thing really is I would look at a drum machine is adding a drum machine in there somehow to create fills, to create build-ups. Um, if not a drum machine, then I'd look at an effects pedal. So how to incorporate some extra effects that probably aren't offered with things like 
Pioneer or even Allen and Heath or whatever, um, having an effects pedal there allows you to do some really cool, crazy stuff with house and techno. And you'll see a lot of house and techno DJs using effects pedals and chains yeah, of effects there's pedals. A few, there's, a, there's a few there's a few mixes that Danny's done, isn't there, on our channel with some extra machines. Yeah, extra, yeah. So extra use extra Roland drum machines. machines. Um, you can check out yeah check out the mixes on the channel. I think he's done one with an Allen and Heath mixer and uh, a drum machine or Allen and Heath mixer and tractor as well. Tractor's really good for adding lots of elements into your set. You'll find a lot of techno DJs still using tractor because of that. Um, yeah, hopefully that helps. Yeah. So yeah. Um, Black Romeo said, which is better purchase, Evermix 4 or iRig Stream? So as we just mentioned, Evermix 4, we've not had any problems with. We've really yeah. liked the product. And there is really good. Rev it's, it's, it's part of how to record your DJ sets, a video on our channel. You can find out about how the Evermix works. We've just been sent the iRig Stream and I've had it plugged into my laptop and it worked well. We've been having a few issues plugging it into a phone. So we're literally just today so we've just been testing it and we'll let you know how it goes um hopefully i think it's just we were setting it up wrong but we'll see how it goes a lot of people have used the iRig and said it's great so yeah so can't imagine. yeah so. yeah we might just have got both a faulty good, one both, both on. good options i assume yeah um right what have we got else here ah here we go Shout yourself out, Lars. So, Rossi okay. Boy said, where can I find Lawrence on social to watch his mixes? Yeah, at someone... DJ Lawrence James. Simple as that. At DJ Lawrence James on Facebook and Instagram and SoundCloud and YouTube. Nice. Um, Thanks, man. Thank you. And you can, you can look for him on Crossfader. It doesn't say who he is, but um, <laughs> you'll have to just... Yeah, a lot of the Serato mixes from Lawrence, a lot of the latest Serato mixes, so you yeah. can go check them out as well. Loads, loads of them. Um, Anna Mobio said, Record Box or Newmark, what do you prefer? Well, Record Box is the software and Newmark is hardware based. Yeah. I Record Box obviously is Pioneer DJ products. I prefer Pioneer products over Newmark products. Um, Newmark products are really great in that entry level market. They are cool. The cool products in the entry level market, yeah. and I love the Newmark Scratch, which is a scratch mixer. Oh yeah, but the DJ yeah. 400 does just the DJ range of 400, 800, 1000. I feel really comfortable on. I think that it's a great product range, and I think I would probably edge towards Recordbox over and a Pioneer controller over Newmark and a Serato software. Yeah. What do you think? Same, it's the exact same answer, mate. Exactly yeah. the same. Yeah. Right. Cool. Um, I do do love the Newmark Scratch though. Love it. Yeah, the Newmark Scratch is great that was my yeah. favorite piece of kit from last year i think so yeah um yeah. here harry witten said pet peeves that djs do <laughs> what annoys oh my you God. <laughs> <laughs> pet peeves um I, I mean play the same songs back to back i do that quite yeah. a bit Just, if i know something sounds good i'll, I'll, I'll be doing that I'll, I'll definitely do that kind of thing but when you hear other djs do the same thing you, you Oh yeah, you pick it yeah, out, I mean, don't I you? Mean, like? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's annoying, but it's just when you get into a habit, it's it's, it's one of them things. But um, um, I I've got one. I I get quite. Go on. I'm I'm not a fan of announcements of announcements. Um, oh right. <laughs> so announcing that something big is going to happen. Yeah. But you're not telling yeah. people what that big thing is. It's like on this day, yeah. I've got a big news for you. Just 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 announce it one time uh, and make it big. So that's yeah. a pet peeve of of mine. Yeah. D yeah, DJs will miss the drop. They're like one, two, three, and then miss the drop. Yeah. Or, oh, I've done that plenty or, of times. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. Or like, or talking over the chorus, like getting on the mic and talking over the the bits you want to sing. Um, yeah. And then off off beat as well. I don't. I don't. I mean, like off phrase. So not like not like out of beat. Yeah. 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 Out, so out not, of not, on the, not on the one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not on the, the timing's wrong, but it's in time, but it's not in time. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah um, that as well. This is a quick one. Francine Gibb said, is there any tips or resources you recommend to learn beat matching? Obviously, with us being an online DJ school, all of our beginner DJ courses are, are packed full of in-depth tutorials on how to beat match and learning to beat match by ear. And we use things called Crossfader DJ tools, which are simplified beats to really help train your ears to know what's right and wrong and how much to adjust um so yeah i've got to shout ourselves out there obviously if you yes. don't want to go to a paid online course then 
just have a good Google, have a good search online. There are lots of videos out there, like one-off videos here and about on the internet and on YouTube. But if you're looking for something comprehensive and structured that follows on in a chronological order, then I've, I've got to uh, shout ourselves out for that. Yeah, so, come to us. Um, right, let me find one more comment. Yeah. Um, what do you want to say? To right. This one, DJ Kiki473, which player do you like? The SZ, SX3, or 1000, or S9? Or S9, or S9. yeah, which do which you prefer, does that mean, yeah? Yeah, um, the 1000 for me. Oh, I do You've got an S9, S9 though, haven't I, I you? I love my S9, but yeah. so the 1000 does pretty much everything the S9 does, but... <laughs> oh, oh, I'm going to go, go S9, it's just... Just because, yeah, I just love it. I just love it, yeah. Yeah. DJ Philo said, can Serato work on CDJs? Yes. However, it's in a mode called HID mode, um, which you will still need some sort of sound card or interface. And what I mean by that is some of the Pioneer mixers, like the DJM 900 Nexus, for example, has a, a sound card in there and it is compatible with Serato. So you would have to plug your laptop into the mixer and into the CDJs. Um, or if you have a, a mixer that isn't Serato compatible that you can't plug a USB into, you will need some sort of sound card like a Denon DS1 or an old Rain SL2, SL3, SL4. If you want to find out more about that, just type in Serato HID mode tutorial on our channel on YouTube yep. and you can find a full breakdown of what works and what doesn't work and how to get it all set up. So yep. that's hopefully what, that's, what, that's what I, that's what I watch because I use it. <laughs> that's how I learned how to use it. Right. This is a good one from Mark, who is a Haitian DJ in the West Indies. He says, we've got a lot of different music genres here. So what do you guys think a Caribbean DJ should do to take himself to the next level? You play a lot of Bashman and reggae dance and all so okay. yeah, dance I mean, all. to take yourself to the next level. I mean, it's. So, I mean, social media is a big one. If it depends what it depends what kind of next level it means, but I mean, a, a, a social media is a big one. Make sure you've got all your content and things like that. Um, one of my favourite DJs is from the Caribbean, a guy called DJ Puffy, who won the World um, Red Bull Three Style Championships. Um, you know, just go and take a look at his socials. His socials are just crazy, really professional. Um, a lot of different uh, variable uh, things from just DJing to his personal life and things like that, mixing it up. But yeah, just go and have a look at DJ yeah. Puffy's um, um, channel, Instagram. Yeah. Instagram, yeah. Um, I've got to say as well, for Caribbean DJs, it's about that sound culture. And I think dub plates is a big one. You can yeah. big, you know, get some dub plates, get some artists. You might have to pay for them, but it helps you stand out. It's all yeah. about that sound clash culture, and I think you know, having artists repping you on on the tracks. I've heard some amazing dub plates, and that's probably something else to look into, maybe to help yep. sort of take you to the next level. Yep. Keaton Shaw said, "Any suggestions for the best record pools for club music? Do you also get to keep music when you unsubscribe?" Uh, the second half of that, yes, you keep the music. You, you're physically downloading the song, so you get to keep it after you unsubscribe. It is not a streaming service for record pools. Lawrence, do you have any for club music? Obviously, we recommend DJ City and BPM Supreme because they're just good overall record yeah. pools. Do you have any more specific for club music? I mean, it depends what uh, genre. Yeah, I, I, use, I, I, use, I use Beatport, and there is a there's, there's one which is probably a little bit less unknown, but it's called DoingTheDamage.com, and that's house house. Um, disco um, club kind of that kind of James hype Joel Corey sounding um, tech house that kind of thing so doing the damage .com, it's quite cheap as well um, or Beatport as well nice uh, Kitten said doesn't Holland use HID Serato yes he does um, so you can always drop him questions about HID and Serato I use it I use it as well yeah I use it. there we go um PP, uh, PP is, you guys get your hands on the XCJXZ. I ordered mine in December and I'm still waiting. Ooh. Yes, yes, I've, I've seen this today on, on Facebook. Two of my DJ friends who ordered really? it just before Christmas or something, still waiting, but I suppose uh, it's just the nature of the world, isn't it? Yeah. Um, we, we've, we've got ours because Pioneer sent it to us just, just prior to release so we could do a review on it. 
Um, so I'm not sure what's going on there. I would definitely recommend getting in with Pi- getting on with Pioneer and be like, where's the product? Um, or with yeah. your local DJ store. I suppose it depends on who's got stock got and who's from, promising yeah. stock. Um, so yeah, I know people do have them though. Other people do have them. I know a lot of people that have got them in the hands. So it could be down to local DJ stores and then coming into coronavirus territory. Yeah. So, yeah. um, Right, someone asked a question earlier, and this is just a follow-up question from Danda. Hey, guys, thanks for answering my question earlier. I just wanted to know your tips on interacting with fans on a live video. How do you guys do it, especially with a fairly small audience? Um, well, as, well, there's one way to grow that audience, just asking asking that fairly small audience to share it with you. So just get on the mic and just say, hope you're enjoying this, guys. Can you please share this so I can get some more followers? And then... Um, yeah, it's about reacting to people that are listening. Just ask them for shout outs, ask them for any song requests. Make sure you've got um, all your all your playlists in order. So if someone asks for a song, you can just play it for, play it for them just to build up a little bit of a audience. And then maybe think about the consistency as well. So maybe think about, okay, I'm going to do a stream every Friday at seven o'clock. So yeah, so that people are so that you know so that people are, it did enjoy you whether it's ten, twenty people that did enjoy you the last week, they know that you're going to come back next week, same time, same place. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's it. And and it's not going to happen overnight. It's a slow process. You've just got to chip away at it. And the yeah. more you build the audience, the more you can interact with them, the more you just got to show up. Um, yeah. Right. Fidel uh, Pina says, Serato DJ Pro or Rekordbox? Oh, Serato, mate. Serato for me. Uh, oh, I'm always more, torn it, with this one because I was a Serato DJ user for years and then sort of started using Rekordbox a lot and I was back and forth between the two and now just with Crossfader, obviously I use a bit of everything. Um, but Rekordbox for library management, for managing music and Rekordbox for, I mean, until the DDJ 1000 SRT came out, I was more record box. But now we've yeah. got a 1000 SRT. I am yeah. definitely liking Serato again quite a lot because I like the simplicity of Serato. It's not as yeah. complex as yeah. record box. I think, I think what has kind of made me rethink Serato a bit is just the the new record box, the record box update that's just come where you can sort of manage your library wirelessly. Yeah. And I've just got my fingers crossed that that will be in the next kind of Serato update or coming soon. Yeah. Because if it's a case where, you know, Serato gets left behind and I'm, I'm left behind the loop, I will always look for the kind of newest, kind of coolest trend kind of thing to make yeah. sure I make, to make my life, my life easier as well. So I'm hoping I'm going to hold out and hope that in the next, I don't know, two, three months, maybe this year, that Serato can step up and introduce kind of iCloud management and things like that. Nice. Um, right, I need everyone that's in the comments now, everyone that's watching, to do me a big favor. If you haven't already, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. It obviously really Please. helps us and it helps us spread spread the love and spread the, the news. Um, the topic today, we're going to carry on for probably another 10, 15 minutes. Is that cool with yep. you, Lawrence? 10, 10 minutes is good with 10 me, 10 minutes is good with you. So topic today is how to be a DJ in lockdown. Just remember, comment now. We've got loads of comments coming in. I'm going to keep working through them. And yeah, shall we try find another one? We've got here uh, from uh, Amjed Hussain. Do you guys always beat match by ear or do you also look at the BPM at times? Now, definitely both. Like using the yeah. BPM as a reference, always listening with headphones. I am anyway. I, I always have my headphones there checking on the, the, the beat match. Um, but when learning, I'd say just focus on training those ears. But yeah, definitely don't don't not use the tools that are there. Just don't um, rely on them. Is what I'd say. Yeah. Yeah. Same. Yeah. I I I, I learned by ear, so it I, I it doesn't really matter. But I definitely find myself looking at the waveforms. But um, it's not. Yeah, you should you should you should learn how to do both. Really. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Zigzag Samuel eight ninety. What are the cons about Rekordbox 6? Um, you go. <laughs> that, I don't think there's... The cons come into the the pricing, if anything. I, there's no cons in the performance or the build of it or anything like that. I think the my biggest gripe with it as it stands is that if you own a set of CDJs, you still have to pay for a subscription 
to plug Rekordbox into those CDJs and use them in HID mode. I think that's a big oversight that if you're paying £2,000 here in the UK for a CDJ, you shouldn't have to pay any more to access the Rekordbox software on that device. So that's that's my biggest come with it but as far as a piece of software it works great it's it is a powerful piece of software and there is a reason why pioneer is still flying in the dj industry i know they're being um should i say crept up very quickly by denon and it'd be interesting to see how that pans out obviously we, we've talked about it live here on the channel me and holland did last week um but yeah, I think there's not really any cons with Recordbox 6. It's 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 very similar to Recordbox 5. It's just the pricing structure has changed and I think the industry has kind of been taken aback by it. So yeah, we'll see how it goes. Um, yeah. Have you used Recordbox 6 yet, Lawrence? Not yet, not, yet, no, yet no. not yet. I really want to um, start, yeah, like I said, that the, um, the uh, mobile management. I really want to get into that but not, not manage to get my teeth into it yet. That's a rattle, man. Someone's asked here, Aaron Lee, how to import music from Beatport into Tractor Pro 3 with a non-Mac computer. Uh, I'm guessing if you... Are you downloading the files as a zip file? So it's all one file. So all the songs are in one file and it's compressed. You might need to extract that file on a Windows laptop. Um, you might have to right-click and on the file and then extract it. Some people in the comments might be able to help you here. You should be able to just drag and drop file straight into Tractor from, if it's an MP3 or a WAV, just drag and drop it straight in. Um, but yeah, if it's a zip file, you'll have to unzip it. Okay, what else have we got here? We've got DJ Kiki, do you have a free record pull? I'm afraid there's not really such thing as a free record pull. <laughs> um, what else have we got? What do you say about the virtual DJs? Krishna S, what do you say about the virtual DJs? I'm guessing um, virtual DJs are software. Are we talking about yeah. here? Yeah, I would have thought so, yeah. I know that the software, Virtual DJ 2020, the latest version, is very, very powerful. Probably the most powerful DJ software on the market. Um, I know you haven't had much experience with it, Lawrence, have you? No, but it is, it's super popular. Um, we... Yeah, we did a, a kind of a poll, and a lot of people are using it. Um, you just won't find. I, I've never seen anyone in a, a live environment using virtual DJ or anything like that. So yeah. I think um, I am not very clued up on it, but it's, it seems seems to be popular. It is popular, and it's hard for us because we've we've come from a background without. You know, we haven't used virtual DJ, so it's something we don't do lots of content on because we don't want to trick people into knowing all about it. When realistically, we don't. We're we're, we're more specialised in Serato Recordbox Tractor, um, because that's what we've used over the over the years. Now, it's not to say that virtual there's anything wrong with virtual DJ. I think it is a very powerful piece of software, and it works with the most equipment out there. So that's something to be said about it. Um, it's something that this year I need to start really diving deeper with. Um, as well as algorithm DJ, I'm really excited about. So yeah, yeah, I love algorithm. One of my favorite favorite things to come out of last year. Algorithm, I absolutely love it. All right then, um, Mark Guzman said, "Is this true? If you download Recordbox Six, you cannot use it on Prime Four. No, you won't. Well, I need to test it. I think." If you've exported the files to a USB drive, it should still convert those files. Fingers yeah. crossed, it should still convert the files on the Prime 4. Um, but there is this whole thing of the XML. Now, I'm sure I've found the XML file in Recordbox 6. If people are having difficulty with it, definitely leave comments about it and we will check it out. I'll set Holland on the task. Uh, yeah. He can tech, tech out about it and try and figure out what's going on. So, yeah... I think you won't be able to plug Recordbox directly in with the laptop into the Prime 4. You've never been able to do that. But exporting, yeah, hopefully. Hopefully. Um, DJ Kiz Walsh, course question. How many courses has Crossfader sold? Uh, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know the answer to this off the top of my head. Um, I think we've got a few thousand students, three to four thousand students um, who've taken courses with us. So... Hope Thank that you very helps. Much. Uh, we'll continue to make the content for you guys. Yeah. Point of it. Um, what else have we got? How to get the drive that back? 
I've got to read these comments. Do you want to just say hi to everyone while I've got loads of comments here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can see the comments coming up at the same time um, as well. Have yeah. you got any comments that you want to read out? Where's the Somebody said, what, uh, Random Beat said, what headphones or studio monitors do you guys use? Uh, oh, I've got some here, actually. These are, whoops, these are HD28 Pros. These are for studio use, so making music. So these are, these are reference um, reference um, headphones. Yeah. Um, so a bit different to DJing, but um, they still still amazing. But I use I used to use uh, the Pioneer, kind of model war headphones and studio monitors. I've got Rocket Eight KRK um, in the studio, and I have some smaller ones here. One second, smaller Mackie ones. I'm all about the Sennheiser HD 25s for the headphones. I've got these. I've got these as well. These are just these. These were off Amazon. There was like eighty pounds for two. Nice. So they're just they're just for you know home use only, but do the job. Nice. Um, UK Family Lee said, do you think we will see record box six waveforms on Pioneer XDJ XZ like the Serato waveforms on the inbuilt screen? The three band new waveform, as far as I'm aware, will not be supported on any current products that are out at the moment is what Pioneer are saying. So firmware updates that come won't unlock that new waveform color. Uh, that might change in the future, but as far as it stands, that's what I've heard on the grapevine. Um, I can imagine they will be added to any future products, though. So, yeah, we'll see what happens there. Right, let's do one or two more questions I've before seen, we I've wrap I've seen a up. good one here. Uh, Vihan says, best way to mix tracks with inconsistent BPMs. So I, Im I imagine different BPMs. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I've, I've literally just been doing one today, so I was recording kind of a multi-genre mix today, and I think I had about nine or ten genres in there, all different tempos. Um and there is a lot of ways um, to do it. Um, a half time is a good one. So, yeah. you know, if, if you've got a house track at 120 BPM, um, you can play a you know a track a track a, a trap tune at 60 BPM uh, in the same kind of it's got the same uh, tempo, just halved. Um, things like using using sync, using it correctly. If you've got sync, you lower a house a house tune down to like 105 and slowly build it up. So both. The, both songs are synced and then they slowly come up to yep. you know 125 uh, that's a great way as well using acapellas um, uh, you can use uh, samples in between in yep. between uh, the changing the, the two tempos um, we've got a few tutorials on the channel Th yep. three easy ways to mix hip hop and or something or three easy ways to mix different genres there's a few different tutorials if you have a look through the the videos on our channel um, yep. and you can check them out there. We've got two comments here, isolated or standard EQ or both. That's from Pancake Mix or DJ Gabriel Nuoro. Oh, wrong one. Let me just move that. You've just done a video on this, haven't you? Yeah. There's a video on the channel um, that went up last week, I think. So one of the latest videos, if you go check it out after this. Isolated or standard EQ settings. I, if I'm mixing popular music or just general radio style music, have it on standard EQ. If I'm mixing anything electronic based like tech, techno, house, drum and bass, even I would put it on isolator EQ. And if you want to find out why, go check out the video after this live stream. Um, and let's just do one more. So what have we got now? Do you guys think? Right, let's finish on this one. Pancake mixes. Do you guys think Denon be the leading club equipment in the near future? Would you like to see the Denon players in clubs or not? It's oh uh, yeah, it's de they're definitely the most kind of exciting thing. Um, there's 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 only there's things that they'll they'll fix on the way. I mean, the the Prime Four was almost for me my perfect controller of the year. I just didn't like the jog wheels. However, the engine Prime software um, seems to be pretty solid and is quite intuitive, and it's just as easy to use as um, as you know Recordbox or Serato. So I, I think this software is pretty much there already to go. Yeah. I just need some tweaks on their uh, products, essentially their the hardware. Yeah. Uh, but it's but it's coming. It's quite close. I think it's I think it's going to get close, but I don't think they're going to take over Pioneer. I just can yeah. kind of see maybe no. side by side. I don't I don't know. 
I would love to see them in clubs, though. But I think it's going to be... It, it'll all come down to the next release from Pioneer on the next CDJs or whatever that, that product is, whether it's an XDJ or a CDJ, I don't know. Um, if that doesn't quite hit the mark, people might go, right, mm. we're not getting any more CDJs for a while. Let's try out Denon. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Um, we'll see. Right, I've just got a big up face melter here. Thanks for... Tipping us, oh, <laughs> big up, thanks Cheers, for all the man. content in a time when we need it most. So I think that's a great Listen. way for us Listen, to finish it's keep, up it's keeping us sane as well. Like it it is. Is, it's a nice thing to do to make content for you guys and to engage. And I know that, um, I think Jamie, are you Jamie doing a stream this with a DJ set this weekend? Yeah, I'm doing a DJ set on Saturday night here in the UK. So um, we'll be promoting that. I've got it on the DDJ 1000 I've got at home. So just a standard one using record box. I'm going to get it all set up yeah. on my, in my kitchen again and we'll see how that goes. Should be fun. Yeah. We'll, we'll keep doing these question and answer. Keep doing the DJ sets and yeah. things We'd, like that. Just to try and keep you guys staying at home and keep you guys inspired, which is the most important thing really. What I need everyone to do right now is just go in the comments, hashtag we are crossfader. Everyone that's just sat through this entire hour and listened to everything. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you for so being much. part of crossfader. Let's see that love in the comments. Hashtag we are Crossfader. And, you know, we see you all out there. Thank you so, so much. And yeah, if you do have any requests for future Q&As, future topics for us to talk about, just yeah. just reach out, post in the comments, drop us an email through our contact form um, or head to the forum on our website. And we'd love to hear some more about what, what you want to hear us talk about and we'll get different guests on. Um, yeah. If there are any specific guests you'd like us to ring and add to the call, then yeah. let us know as well, which we'll try to get in touch with people. So thanks for watching and yeah. we'll catch you all very soon. soon. Stay safe. Stay safe. Thank you. Thank you.